The turnout tonight is great because it shows that we are ready for change. Yeah. Are we ready for change? Yeah. Are we ready for change? Yeah. You are just as bright as the Penang people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we are at our most important general elections. Many of us, I am slightly younger of course, but many of us have waited for so long to get this opportunity to finally change the Amno Barisan National Government. For so long, this opportunity has eluded us. The opposition was very divided. We did not have a common force against Amno Barisan National and that things were never going right for the opposition. In 2008, things changed. I was at that time 26 years old when I ran in the Sri Satya state elections. Sri Satya is in Klanajaya, in Sungai Wei, for those of you who do not know. When I ran in 2008, my opponent, the incumbent Datin Paduka Saripah Noli, had a majority of 13,000. My father said, good luck, I give you my blessings, but don't be too disappointed if you lose. <laughs> Well, I thought that it would be fun, it's an adventure, you know, most probably I would lose but, you know, I learned something from it. In the future, I'll run again and this can be a first experience. It turned out that on the 8th of March, suddenly I ended up with a 3,000 majority from the people of Sri Sukhya. And it wasn't just me. It wasn't just me in Sri Sukhya. But from just two DAP seats in Selangor in 2004, we ended up with 36 seats and we formed the state government of Selangor. Something no one could dream about. That past Keadilan and DAP could win in Selangor. If you remember that Jawa Putih, Kertoyo, remember, remember him or not? Just before the elections, he was saying, I want to have zero opposition in the Dun. Pembangkang Sifar. Tengok-tengok dia jadi ketua pembangkang. It was truly historic and not only that, we also won Penang, we won Perak, we won Kedah in addition to Kelantan. At that time, ladies and gentlemen, the people in the cities especially, Malays, Chinese, especially Indians overwhelmingly voted for the opposition. They were tired of Amno Barisan National. There was no Pakatan Rakyat at that time. PAS, Keadilan, DAP were separate parties. But they just felt that whatever it is, they did not want Amno. They did not want Barisan. Sorry? Oh, okay. Sorry, Cynthia Gabriel from Swaram has just arrived. She will be telling you a lot more tales from Mongolia and France. I will concentrate on Selangor and Malaysia. Anyway, in 2008, we must always remember that the majority of voters in Peninsula Malaysia, 51%, voted for PAS, Keadilan and DAP. Only 49% voted for BN. If you listen to the radio right now, you watch the TV, you do not feel that because it seems that BN is so strong. In between songs, when I listen to the radio, there are at least two BN adverts. And that's not even RTM. That's the Astro radios. But what allowed BN to win in 2008 was simply that Sabah and Sarawak gave them a huge support, a huge mandate. That's why the people in Sabah and Sarawak were called by Najib, were called by Patlah as the fixed deposit of Amno Barisan National. We have a bank behind here. We know what fixed deposit is, you know? It's very safe investment. No matter what the economic condition, if the capital will be safe, it's just a matter of you know, the interest rate, how much you'll be getting. But to me, that is an insult. If you look at the streets of Sabah and Sarawak, 
Don't mind the streets. Look at the highways of Sabah and Sarawak. They look like the back alleys in Selangor, in Peninsula Malaysia. But there, they are called the highways. Why? Because people like Taib Mahmud, they go only on helicopters to see their rakyat. <laughs> and that's only during election time, mind you. Not during the normal time. Otherwise, they will just be in the istana and dividing the billions. <laughs> but this time around, the people of Sabah, Sarawak are with us for change. <laughs> you go to Sabah this time around, Every time people say, Ini kalilah kita tukar. You go to Sarawak, ladies and gentlemen. Sarawak, Sabah, normally they are very wary of peninsular politicians. And I do not blame them. But this time around, I went to a long house in the interior. They are all Ibans, they are all Christians. Okay, normally they are very scared of the opposition, especially past. Because BN say, kalau pas menang semua kena potong. <laughs> so I went to the longhouse to meet the people in the longhouse and campaign there. But suddenly I saw, I thought that they would be very scared. They, they would be afraid. But the house was covered with keadilan flags. <laughs> there was even one room, one house, which had the picture of Tok Guru Nick Aziz on the door. Why? Because they say that is the type of Malay Muslim leadership that they admire. The humility, the modesty, the trustworthiness. Not like Ustaz Zulkifli Nordin. Not like Ibrahim Ali. I'm a Malay, I'm a Muslim. I do not feel proud at all to have people like Ibrahim Ali and Zulkifli Nordin to represent me. Yet, yet, Mr. One Malaysia Najib Tun Raza is happy to have them to represent Barisan National in these elections. Okay lah, maybe it's not Najib, maybe it's Rosmah. I do not know. <laughs> But this time around, ladies and gentlemen, I can assure you, whether you're Malay, you're Chinese, you're Indians, you're Sabahan, Sarawakians, the mood for change is very clear. I went to an orang asli kampung in uh, Pahang. They do not have electricity, they do not have water. And yet, just as I was about to tell them about our manifesto, about our buku jingga, the orang asli guy said, please do not campaign to me. I already memorized buku jingga. <laughs> I was a bit shy because I did not memorize the buku jingga. I only remember some points out of it. Maybe we can put him on a forum with Rafizi. <laughs> but the mood is very real. It's very real and I think that the survey itself, which Sivarasa mentioned, it reflects the sentiment on the ground. It's People this time around, they really want change. I shake hands, I meet them. The sentiment for change is very, very strong. So we must take this opportunity. Because the situation in Malaysia is very bad. We are already at the breaking point for our society. The government has been spending more money than it has earned since 1997 when Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim was the finance minister. Since then, we have been spending more money every year than our earnings. Even when in 2003, the price of petrol went up and hence the income of the government because we rely a lot on petrol revenues went up, the government still find a way to spend more than our income. Amazing. You know, it's like you, you used to get a gaji 2000 as an executive, you jadi manager. Gaji 5000 Dulu your lifestyle was 3000 pakai credit card. Now suddenly, you got a platinum card, also your lifestyle change. Your hutang still tak selesai. And this hutang, what does it mean? This debt, what does it mean? It means that the government has less money to spend to build hospitals for the rakyat. It has less money to spend on our education, which is why that we have to spend money to send our kids to private schools, to international schools. 
when while we pay taxes, we should get the best government schools in the region. Our spending on education now is going down in the rankings compared to other countries. Our spending, my wife is a doctor. I, I hope she still have a job after I, I say this. She's a doctor at a government hospital. But the situation at government hospitals is really dire, it's really bad. Why? Because to buy equipment, to buy medicine, they have to go through only one or two companies. They could have buy three equipments, they end up can only afford buy one equipment. Long queues at the hospitals. Maybe many of us here can afford to go to private hospitals, but not everyone can. Many of the rakyat cannot. And why should we again? You go to the UK, everyone goes to the NHS. Because we pay taxes. Betul tak? You look at the corruption. The corruption, we know the big ones, 250 million Sharizat Jalil's famous steak. Uh, you want to get the best steak in the world, it's not Wagyu beef. Huh? The best steak in the world is Gemas beef from Sharizat's farm, NFC, because this lembu lives in condominium. Okay? And this is not Damansara Perdana condominium, it's Bangsa condominium, mind you. Lagi mahal. Okay? Even Marina Bay in Singapore punya condominium. <laughs> then you have PKFZ, of course 12 billion you know. And you know what's funny? Najib. Najib doesn't have the courage, didn't have the courage to sack Sharizat when she was found to be responsible for this. Eventually she was not renewed as a senator. Only itu saja. But what happened? Her deputy, Datin Paduka Kamalia, Datin Paduka Kamalia criticized Sharizat. What did she say? Saya malu sebagai wanita amno sebab bila kami pergi berkempen kat kampung-kampung pakai tudung merah, baju kurung putih, orang kampung kata buka pintu saja nampak lembu. So dia kata dia sudah malu. But what happened? Datin Paduka Kamalia did not get to contest the seat that she wanted but Sharizat was protected betul tak? <laughs> then what else happened? PKFZ on tiket ada berani sikit lah lawan but he did not get to contest dia mau bagi Rafizi mudah menang in pandan maybe Najib I don't know <laughs> But he did not get to contest. And yet, what did who does uh, Najib listen to? Chua Solek, the film star. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to go more than that. But there is a lack of leadership with Najib Tun Razak. Betul tak? <laughs> he cannot show that he is leading the country. I don't know who is he most scared of, Rosmah or Mahathir. I guess it depends on which side of the bed he wakes up. <laughs> But we need a leader in this country. We need a prime minister who is a leader who can stand firm. Who say that I reject racists. I reject extremists. I stand for moderation. I stand for One Malaysia, which is his own campaign. But he cannot even do that. But I want to tell you just before I will wrap up soon. I want to tell you about the small corruptions that is happening because the big ones you know. The small corruptions that has become a culture because what do the people say? The fish rots from the head. When they see that it's a norm, dah jadi satu kebiasaan untuk berlaku rasuah, maka orang lain pun buat rasuah juga. There is, there are 24 plots of land in Selangor between 1990 to 2008 that was given to AMNO, MCA, MIC and Gerakan. Betul-betul satu Malaysia. It was given to them at one ringgit per square feet. Oh when we exposed this, AMNO and MCA, what did they say? Oh, we deserve this land because we fought for the country's independence. Oh they are still stuck in history. And there are other people who fought for their independence. And this is not the same AMNO and MCA that fought for the country's independence. Yeah. If you remember closely, 
Tunku Abdul Rahman, he was a prince. But he became poor because he fought for the country's independence. But now in AMNO, you have people who do not know anything, who do not have any education, but because they become big guns in AMNO, tiba-tiba jadi kaya raya. Betul tak? Then, they got these plots of lands. Then what else were their justification? They said they got the land cheaply in order to use for community purposes. Kindergartens, halls and all that. Fine. Assuming that was true. So we did an investigation. I went to a piece of land in my area. SS7 Klana Jaya behind Paradigm. You know, that, that's a prime land. Going to Ara Damansara. I was looking for a hall. Couldn't find a hall. I was looking for a kindergarten. Can't find a kindergarten. What did I find? A very tall condominium. This land was given to Amno Bahagian Klana Jaya at one ringgit per square feet. Now the value of the land is nearly a hundred ringgit per square feet. There was another case where in USJ 3B and 3D, another beautiful plot of land, Banglo lots, 90 pieces in 2001, were sold at two ringgit per square feet. If we open a counter, I'm sure in minutes it will be uh, sold, all these pieces of land. Among the 90 people, we found out that at least, at least five are Barisan politicians, including three from MCA. But I don't want to talk about MCA because MCA is irrelevant. <laughs> Two are from AMNO. And the people from AMNO include Megat Najmudin, Megat Khas, who is the former Adon for my area, and also is currently in the MACC Advisory Board and the AMNO Disciplinary Council. Can you imagine? Secondly, it is Datin Paduka Saripah Noli, the lady I defeated in 2008. So I went to see their houses. Maybe you wanted to say hi or have tea with them. But it turns out they also sold their land. Why? All five of them, the BN people. Because the land that they got for two ringgit per square feet is actually worth 150 ringgit per square feet today. Easy money, Alibaba. So that is why, ladies and gentlemen, we could see the corruption is becoming endemic in Amno Barisan National. It is time for change. Yes. Yes. Moving forward, we have shown what have we done over the past five years. Are we perfect? We are not perfect. We are still learning. But we have been able to show that we can do many things, many new things that Amno Barisan could not do. We have provided free water to the people of Selangor. Yes. When we wanted to give free water, Kirtoyo said that Selangor will be bankrupt in six months. Are we bankrupt? No. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, when we came to power, we had about 300 million ringgit in our reserves. Today, our reserves are 2.6 billion ringgit. This is what Muslims call that we have received the blessings of God that you spend money on the rakyat. And yet your savings are also growing. But Barisan, why when we want to implement policies for the rakyat? We say we want to lower the taxes on cars. We say we want to, uh, what do you call that, uh, provide cheaper uh, fuel, uh, give free education. They say it will bankrupt the country. Why? Because in their mathematics, there's always corruption. In their mathematics, there's always commission. But whereas in our mathematics is simple. Five minus three is two. So it's straightforward. But for Barisan, five minus three are the hidden, hidden, hidden charges. Ends up are the jadi minus. That's why it's always bankrupt, bankrupt, bankrupt. Now with that 2.6 billion, we are going to build a 300 million ringgit bridge in Klang that was promised by the Barisan Federal Government but that is not being built till today. And that is not our money, that is your money but we are giving back to the rakyat as it should be. So Barisan National is very scared this time because this time they are facing 
the most formidable challenger ever faced by Barisan in their history, Pakatan Rakyat, PAS Keadilan and DAP. Are we perfect? No, we are not perfect. Yes, we have our differences. But the good thing is that we discuss, we debate, we deliberate. It's not the big brother style in AMNO. MIC have to receive Zulkifli Noden. Bukan sekadar kena terima Zulkifli Noden. Kena cium lagi Zulkifli Noden. Mana ada dignity? Where is the dignity of MIC? This is how it shows that things have changed with Pakatan Rakyat and they are very scared. They know this time around that we have a real chance to win the elections. We are already leading according to many of our surveys. But what is very crucial, ladies and gentlemen, is that we must make sure that we do not fall to the politics of fear. My mom does Tai Chi at Taman Aman in PJ. I grew up in section 14 PJ in front of the girls' school, Sri Aman. My mom does Tai Chi at the park there. And many of her friends ask her, hey, have you stocked your rice and sardines? Because they have been receiving SMSs that there will be a lot of disturbances. But that is the thing that is being perpetuated by Amno Barisan National. Amno Barisan National also plays the cut of racism. When Chua Solek pays these MCA advertisements in these Chinese newspapers that shows that the Chinese, you know, go to nightclubs and all that with girls around them, a Chinese man with girls around them, and saying that, oh, if you vote for the opposition, all this will change. I think Chua Solek is changing, thinking about himself. <laughs> But that is, in, is, is an insult, I do not know, but I think it's, it's an insult to the Chinese community that they are reducing that that's all the Chinese is all about. What about education? What about um, your rights to your human rights, your basic rights? What about that? What about your freedom of expression? Amno yes. goes to the Malay kampongs to say that if a vote for us is a vote for the AP. They keep on playing this card because that's the only game that they know what to play. You have our newspapers today. They blatantly lie. New Straits Times used to be a very respected paper. But since 1998, they have lost all their credibility whatsoever. You have our tabloids showing alleged sex videos of Pakatan leaders on the front page. Can you imagine our kids buying newspapers or seeing these newspapers? Since 1998, sodomy is a household word in Malaysia. <laughs> Why? Because the politics of pornography that is being perpetuated by AMNO Barisan National. They are also sending the culture, they are also sending a message that it's okay to have gangsters. That it's okay to perpetuate the politics of fear. I went with Nurul Izzah to Afelda in Pahang. Her tudung nearly got ripped off by the AMNO people there. I went to Johor. I got kicked by the AMNO youth there. They have all the time in the TV to campaign. They have all the space and yet when we want to do our little programs, we get all sorts of trouble from gangsters and all that. This is the message that they are sending to the young people. It is time that we put a stop to this. The biggest difference between Pakatan and Barisan is simple. Barisan relies on the politics of the past, the politics of fear, the politics of divisiveness. Pakatan, it's about the politics of hope, about believing, about Malaysians trusting in each other and believing in the future of the country. So I hope, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this 5th of May, we have an excellent adun here. I know a friend of mine who keeps singing her praises. Although I can tell you, uh, you know, he comes from an Amno family, but he keeps singing Elizabeth Wong praises. I'm not sure because it's the beautiful poster or because she does an excellent job.
No, just joking. But I know she is an excellent, hardworking adun for Bukit Lanjar. I also know YB Sivarasa Rasia, who is very capable, a road scholar. You know, Bill Clinton was a road scholar, very smart, very brilliant. And these are the type of people that Pakatan Rakyat, that Keadilan is offering to the electorate today in Subang and in Bukit Anjang. We want our parliament to be a real Dewan Mulia, a real Dewan where people can debate and deliberate with intelligence. And we won because this time around, we will win. Insha'Allah, on the 5th of May, we want a cabinet of talents. So we want people like Sivarasa inside. Just as you've had Elizabeth Wong inside the state cabinet since 2008. So I really hope, ladies and gentlemen, and if there's any voters from Sri Setia, don't forget to vote for me. I really hope on 5th of May, we can defend. We can defend Slango. And this time around, give the opportunity to see what Selangor can do hand in hand with a Pakatan federal government in Putrajaya. Boleh tidak? Ini kalilah. Ini kalilah. Ini kalilah.